Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, October 16th, 2020, and we are 18 days until Election Day, and I'm going to say it. The GOP should be very, very worried. In the words of Susan Collins, this race should make them very concerned. And when we're looking at, you know, the 2020 elections, it's not just the presidential race. I've made this clear in almost all of my videos that the GOP is at a very bad point. But I want to draw uh, a certain conclusion around why they're at such a bad position on top of the races that actually are going to move away from them. Now, Throughout the entire past three years, everything that I have said has been speculative. And now that we have reached nearly 20 million Americans already have casted their ballots, uh, this is a very significant um, uptick in terms of early voting. And also, it's not a good sign for President Trump. So on your screen right now is a map provided from map.jacksonjude.com. You can go ahead and check it out. It gives you the 538 pro projection on a YAPMS map. And if you're looking at it, you see... 351 electoral votes for Joe Biden and 187 for Donald Trump. Now, that's not just the main point. The reason why I think that the GOP should be extremely, extremely worried in a week from now, it'll be even further than that. Maybe I'll say extremely four times this time. But looking at the presidential race, it honestly doesn't look too good. You can see that today, Donald Trump, as the incumbent president who won his reelection bid against all odds four years ago, has a 13% chance of victory for the election. For a reference point in 2016, he had a 33, 34, 35% chance at winning. So, Besides that, his forecast is down 20% from where it was four years ago. And if we're looking at the winding pathway to victory, it doesn't get much better for him here. But I want to draw this uh, correlation between Donald Trump's numbers and the way that people are voting for the GOP versus the Democratic Party. Take a look at this number. 42.9%. 42.9% is the percent of Americans that approve of Donald Trump. He's entering into his re-election bid, not being approved of once since January 2017. Not a single president in United States history, in history of polling, can say the same. There has never been a president who has been consistently disapproved of from the beginning, not once hitting an overall net approval, except for the month following their inauguration, which was not really a month. It was more like a week. January 2017, sworn in right into the th end of the third week in January. So realistically, a week. And Donald Trump was approved of then, never since then. So that 42.9% number, I want you to take a look at because we're about to take a look at the 2020 presidential election polls. Well, Donald Trump gets roughly 41.8% of the vote. That means that 1% of Americans who may approve of the way that President Trump is handling, uh, you know, whatever it is, handling his job, 1% of them are not voting for him. And that's not only it. Not only are Donald Trump's numbers worse on the national average than in his approval, but the approval correlates with the generic ballot as well. The Republican Party is now down seven points nationally, not just Donald Trump, but the Republican Party as a whole. You see, the generic ballot in 2016 had the Democrats up by less than a percentage point. They ended up losing it by, uh, by less than two percentage points. So it was a roughly two point swing in favor of the GOP. In 2018, the polls were actually off, but they favored the Democrats. I mean, looking at the 2018 election results, the Democrats were leading in the average by 7%. They ended up winning by 8%. So looking at the generic ballot now, there has never been this large of a lead for an opposition party, probably in modern history. I mean, the last time a president wasn't reelected was George H.W. Bush in 1992. Since then, every president has been reelected consecutively. But however, I mean, there has never been four presidents consecutively reelected. So this would also break history. Um, but, you know, since the 90s, every president has been reelected. But looking at the generic ballot, this is a warning sign for the GOP. It's telling the GOP that Donald Trump's numbers are directly correlated with how well they perform in almost every single race. While some Republican candidates may outperform Donald Trump uh, compared to his presidential numbers, Michigan, John James, is expected to do better than Donald Trump in this battleground state. Generally, you want to ride in the coattails of a winning candidate, and generally that is the incumbent president. Take a look at 2012, for example. When Barack Obama lost Missouri and lost Indiana, there were two Senate races that ended up going for the Democratic Party. 
had those margins been for uh been overwhelming for Mitt Romney the same way that they were for Donald Trump, it is very likely that those Republicans that were running against uh you know Claire McCaskill and Joe Donnelly would have won. And the reason for that was because Indiana and Missouri were nine point margins of victory for Donald for Mitt Romney against Don, uh, Barack Obama. I'm mixing my politicians here, but um, all in all, that 10 point victory wasn't enough to overcome uh, the Democratic Party's vote share on the Senate elections. But had it been a 19 to 20 to 21 point victory for the Republican candidate, in that case, Mitt Romney, it's very hard to see how all of those voters would split ticket. So Indiana, actually, this time around, Trump is expected to win by 10%. He won it by a safe margin in 2016. Same thing in Missouri. But I do want to point out that, you know, looking at the numbers, we can actually see the polling numbers here. Um, based on the polling averages, it actually is a little bit better for uh, Trump in Indiana, a little bit worse in the state of Missouri. But all in all, this is the 538 projection. This is where the map stands today. And um, let's go ahead and go all the way to uh, October 10th, 2016. And I think that this is just important to note. The Democratic Party, if the election held today, is held today, is projected to win 351 electoral votes. If you support President Trump, or even if you support a Republican agenda, you may not be on board with President Trump. Ask yourself, do you really want to be at a position where the Democratic opponent is at 351? Obviously not. And yes, you could argue the, the pundits were wrong in 2016. But you can invalidate every other time they've been correct, including 2018. On top of that, they weren't far off in 2016. 538 still has their 2020, uh, sorry, 2016 election projection up. And you can see out of all of the other forecasts, 538 gave Donald Trump the largest chance of victory. In fact, on election day, they released an article that said, two articles, Donald Trump has a realistic chance of winning the presidency and all he needs is a minor polling bump, polling error. That gives him the win, and that's exactly what happened. So these forecasts are a lot more accurate than you'd actually believe. And what we see now is that Donald Trump's approval rating is directly correlated with his national numbers. In fact, his national numbers are a tad bit worse, which is obviously not a good sign. And the Republican Party is running almost exactly even with Donald Trump uh, on the race for Congress. 41.9% versus 41.8%. It seems that Republicans and Repub Republicans and Donald Trump are running even. And that's why they should be worried because not only is the presidential race moving out of reach, the House race immediately became out of reach. Take a look at the chance of the Republican Party winning the House. I want this to set in for just a second. We'll focus on this because in 2016, Democratic Party had single digits at winning the House of Representatives. Nothing has fundamentally changed about the districts. While two individual states have had redistricting issues and have redistricted, besides that, the rest of the 400 seats across the country have remained the same. They are gerrymandered the same. They are lopsided one way or another. And this is the same exact, practically same exact map from 2016 that the Democrats had a single digit chance at winning. The Republican Party now is down to a 4% chance at winning. And it gets worse because not only does the Democratic Party have a 96% chance at retaining the House of Representatives. If I had told you that four years ago, you would have laughed in my face. They now have a chance at possibly hitting double digit gains. Double digit gains. I mean, the Democratic Party today holds mid 230s. And if we're looking at what they could possibly reach, they're already expected to gain seats. The question is how many? The question for the GOP immediately after the 2018 midterm elections was, how many seats can they win back? How can they narrow it up? But because of Donald Trump, combined with lackluster House candidates, the Democratic Party is now on track to gain seats. And it gets even worse. Taking a look at the Senate elections, the Democratic Party is nearly at a three in four chance at winning back the Senate. Four years ago, they were the favorites, but only by a little. And it was because of Donald Trump's uh, outstanding performance in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania that the Republican Party retained Senate control. And, you know, both of those states, the Democratic Party was the favorite, according to 538 to win. But nobody could have expected that people were expecting Trump to. I mean, we all knew that everyone was expecting Trump to lose, which is part of the reason why some Democrats may have even voted for Republicans to check a possible Hillary Clinton presidency. But on top of that. The Democratic Party does not have that uh, working against them this time around. That's partially why they're doing better. The map in 2016 was way more favorable. 
The Democratic Party in a heartbeat would pick up the 2016 map and apply it to the 2020 election because there are so many possibilities of pickups for the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party has had to work around very weird situations. They have made Kansas competitive. They have made Montana competitive. They have made Georgia two elections that are competitive. That are They are now the favorites to win in the Georgia special election. I mean, all in all, the Democratic Party is doing well, whether it's the presidential race, obviously in the House race, and now in the Senate elections. And I know I probably do sound like a broken record, and it's going to keep going until the final 18 days run out because i have practically been saying this throughout the entire campaign season even before then donald trump is single-handedly single-handedly bringing down the gop his approval matches his national numbers his national numbers match the republican party's national numbers his chances at the presidency are higher than they are at the republican party at the house when it was obviously the other way four years ago. In the Senate elections, the Republican Party has a 28% chance at victory. That is the largest percent chance at victory across all three parts. Whether it's the two chambers of Congress or it's the presidential race, 28% is their peak. And look at the map. The Democrats are now poised to pick up a state that the Republican Susan Collins won by nearly 40% six years ago. The Democratic Party is now poised to win North Carolina, a traditionally conservative state, voted with Mitt Romney. The last time it went to a Democrat was by 14,000 votes in 2008. In fact, Indiana, percentage-wise, voted to the left of North Carolina in 2008, for a reference point. The Democrats are now poised to hold both Senate seats in Arizona four years ago. That was unbelievable. There were more Republicans in Congress from Arizona than Democrats. The opposite is true now. There were two Republicans in the Senate from Arizona. The opposite will likely be true following November. And then taking a look at Montana, this is a state where nobody thought was going to be competitive that is competitive today. So not only here, there are a number of other examples. I'm not going to keep drawing it on. But like I said, the numbers match up between Donald Trump and the Republican Party. He is bringing down the Senate chances because of the fact that 50-50 tie could possibly be a very very real scenario for both parties that they will need the vice president. And if Trump has a one in 10 chance at victory, that makes it even worse. And as the days go on, as you can see on this map, we are 17 days, 10 hours, 46 minutes and 24 seconds until the 2020 election. We are narrowing down to single digits in terms of our countdown. We are getting exceptionally close, exceptionally close to the election. And Donald Trump has shown us that throughout the entirety of the campaign season, he started off with 204 in the beginning of June 2020 and now ends off with 187. Take a look. Take a look at the states that go from red to lighter red down to being blue. Again, 2020 June, October 2020. Georgia, for the first time, I think, in the entire forecast, has moved to the Democrats. That's pretty substantial. Take a look at the uh, Cook Political Report of all of these states. I mean, take a look at where it stood on 11-30-2018. Look at all of that red. Trump was at 220. Biden was at 232 or whatever Democratic nominee at the point was the favorite, probably Biden, 232 to 220. As the weeks and the months progressed, Donald Trump's chances got exceptionally worse. Now, today, what went from 232 to 290 for Biden went from 220 down to 163 for Trump. Again, these numbers are not looking good. It doesn't matter where you look. You can't find a situation where the GOP truly, without ignoring data, can believe they are the favorites to win. It's a very unfortunate situation for them. And like the title of this video suggests, and explicitly says, actually not suggests, explicitly says they should be very, very, very worried about the outcome of this election. Because in the two years, if the Democrats do win the Senate, the House, and the presidency, D.C. could become a state. Puerto Rico could become a state. There's so many possibilities that the Democratic Party has been limited since the House was won by the Republicans in 2010. They haven't had a Democrat president with a House of Representatives. Biden would be the first one since 2010. This is going to be big for the Democratic Party. And the GOP has a lot to worry about.
So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord link for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 election predictions if you just want to see where I think the race stands today. Again, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you all later today.